The first thing you should notice is the pencil sketch. None of these flowers look the same because each petal is located on a different plane. Some of them are extremely foreshortened. Remember to draw what you see. None of the flower petals are completely parallel to the picture plane, so do not draw a schematic looking flower. For most areas in the watercolor painting, you want to start with the wet on wet technique. Look for the different values within each petal, stem, and leaf. Use darker colors in darker areas and lighter colors in lighter areas. Try to use at least five different colors in each petal and each leaf. Notice how each petal has several colors within that petal. It will still look like the color that you want it to look. It just also shows the many different values within each petal and each leaf. By laying down your water first and then dropping in the different colors that you see, or colors that show the different values. It's going to make everything look a lot richer, a lot more interesting, and you're going to have a painting that looks very three dimensional and not flat. Very rarely. Will you ever see a painting that is completely painted in local color? That would mean that the artist is trying to match colors exactly. As long as you show different values, your painting is going to be a lot more interesting. So bringing in colors that maybe you just see a little tiny bit of or a color that maybe just brightens everything up, like sometimes adding a little bit of orange really brightens an area up. I find I bring a lot of orange into leaves and I definitely brought in orange into some of these petals and that helped to make things look a lot more interesting and a lot more realistic. In some of the petals, I would not paint the entire petal with water first. I would leave little bits of it um, dry so that the paint did not flow into those areas. And sometimes I just didn't purposely did not cover an area so that it would remain white. So I would have that really light light within each petal or leaf as well. Because these were really little petals, I was using a tiny brush, but if you were painting bigger petals or maybe you zoomed in on just a few of the flowers to paint and that was your entire image, then you could use a really big brush. So it all depends on how much of the area you're trying to cover. So even when it's this tiny little area, you're just using a much smaller brush but you're still bringing in a lot of colors into that small area.
Notice that as I'm painting these, I'm moving all over the page. That's so that each petal and each leaf has a chance to dry so that they don't run into each other. I was outdoors painting this. So as I was doing it, I couldn't get up and go blow dry it every few minutes. So it was really important that I just moved around the page. And as I was doing that, it gave everything a chance to dry. And even if you are in studio painting something, you don't always want to have to be blow drying everything. So you want to move around your page so things don't run together. It's really easy to look at a leaf and just think it's green. I should just be using green. But if you think about yellow and blue make green, so you definitely want to bring those in. Um, adding red to green makes green darker. Anytime you add a complementary color, even if it's just a tiny little bit, it will make that color appear darker. But you can also use blues and purples as darker colors. I just tell everybody purple makes everything look better. So definitely in darker areas. But mixing your blues and purples together can also give you that like appearance of almost black so can your complementary colors. So when you want something to appear really dark, taking advantage of those things can give you those values that you need. If you want something to appear more pastel-y, you can just use more water mixed in. The more saturated you want it to be, the more paint you can pick up. But remember, there's a difference between saturation and a color just appearing darker. To make a color darker, you don't want to just pick up more paint. You want to add a darker color to it. So adding the complementary color to it, adding purple, adding blue, those are ways to make that darker, not by just picking up more paint. It's kind of the similar uh, thinking when anytime you're using color, whether it's pastel or colored pencil, um, you don't just push harder. Um, so I realize that this is different because you're using watercolor paint, but you don't just pick up more paint because of that. However, if you want it to be, appear more saturated, uh, more opaque than obviously picking up more paint uh, you can get that effect but you can also get a pastel -y look by doing that you never use white watercolor paint you either if you want it to have a more white appearance you can use a lot more water in an area you can leave that area completely white or you can blot out with a paper towel. But you never add white paint to it. In student sets, you'll see white paint, but you really want to try to avoid using that white paint. Same kind of thing, you kind of want to avoid using black you also want to avoid using the white. There's really no need 
uh, for either one of them ever with watercolor. Occasionally I will use black um, if I'm painting something that is black, but n always when I'm doing that, I will always add other colors to the black and never drop straight black onto, onto the page. I would always mix it first. Uh, I rarely use black. Um, in this particular painting, I did not use black at all. So you can really avoid using black most of the time. You can get really dark just by mixing complementary colors together and by bringing in purples and blues into some of those darker areas. Notice anytime you want to mix, you're picking up your board and moving it around. On this, I used a watercolor block, but you can also tape down your watercolor paper to a board. You can stretch it first before you do that so that it's less likely to warp. If you use 300 pound paper, it's not going to warp no matter what, but it's really expensive. So stretching 150 pound paper or using a watercolor block with at least 150 pound paper um, is a good way to go. I would always prefer to use watercolor block over stretching my own paper, but cost is definitely part of the equation oftentimes. So on this pot part, I left some areas white by not putting any water down in those areas. And now I'm like blotting out some with the paper towel. So you can get that white, that bright white that you need in every object by doing either of those things. You can also get it, have a more pastel look by just using more water and less paint in any area. So even though this pot is kind of brownish, I'm using reds, oranges, blues, purples. That's going to make it look a lot richer than if I were to just dump brown in there and it's not going to look as flat. So now I'm doing the dirt. And with the dirt, at first I'm painting in with my water. And it's really important that anytime you're coming in and painting in an area, you're careful about how and where you lay that water in. And then even though the dirt is brown and black and with little white speckles, I'm going to be using a lot of purples and blues because they're very dark. You can use some reds. I'm going to use some browns. And notice I'm not brushing it in. I'm dropping it in. And then I'm going to use salt to get some of the texture. I'm using a really fine salt. But you could use a coarser salt if you wanted more of a texture. You could get like a kosher salt. The bigger the salt grains are, the more it's going to pull away. You just need to wait till it's totally dry to shake the salt off or kind of rub it off. So anytime you are wanting it to blend, you're picking up your board and you're moving it. I'm fixing up little areas there with my brush. I'm not adding more paint. I'm just kind of moving the paint around into some of the areas it didn't flow into. 
But you have to be very careful with that too, that you don't muddy it up. Remember if you need to add more detail or a second layer for any reason, you need to make sure that you have let the area underneath completely dry. Everyone will make the mistake of coming in and just brushing a little bit too much, even though you know you shouldn't do it. So be careful not to do that. So I moved around the page even with the, this pot so that they didn't all run together. The only way to uh, avoid doing that would be to blow dry between each thing. But if I'm working outside here, that'd be a lot of trips into the house. And sometimes you might be painting at a beach or somewhere and you just really need to let it dry between things. So I really try to like work around my page. You can move it as much or as little as you want to get it to all blend together. Again, it's mixing by dropping that paint in and then moving the board. I'm just doing finishing touches, coming in and getting my rim. I'm blotting out a little bit because that rim is very light. So you have several ways to create that really light effect. Now I'm kind of coming in and adding some of the darker shadows. Just defining some things. I'm starting to add the wash for the background. So I'm using a different brush. This is a wash brush. It's a flat brush. If this were a really big painting, I would want to use a really big wash brush. Because if I used this size brush for a really large painting, it would dry too quickly. Typically, if you're painting a bigger painting, you're just going to be using bigger brushes. And that's the same whether it's oil, acrylic, or watercolor. So you have to work pretty quickly when you come in and you add in the water so that it doesn't dry.
but you also have to be careful because if you cover up certain areas accidentally, your background is going to flow into your foreground. So making sure that everything is wet. Then you're going to be mixing up that wash that you want for the background. And you want to make sure that you have enough mixed up. So I'm using multiple colors in the background. So I have a few different colors mixed up. It's just the color mixed up with a lot of paint. The hardest part is coming in and getting around these little areas. And you can still pick up your board and move it to get it to mix more if you want it to have more of a mixed look. If you want everything to be more of the same color throughout the background, you could just use one color. I like to mix colors in the background, but it's really your choice in what you want your final outcome or look to be. And whether you want it to have like more of a pastel look or more of a, a saturated look. So if you want it to be more saturated, you would be mixing your wash with more pigment. And I'm just mixing it around right now. And I'll just come in and do a few little finishing touches. 